everybody and welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to give you a quick update on what's been going on with the Guppy Research Project and to give you a quick up recap for those of you who don't know, I'm trying to see if I can witness natural and sexual selection happen in real time using guppies and I've gotten some pretty interesting results. I wasn't really sure what was going to happen and it's kind of taken on a life of its own, but in the beginning I was using this little oven bake clay fish that I had made, but originally I wanted to use, this is a golden wonder killifish back there, and from what little bit I understand about them, they live in the same type of natural environment as the guppies and they can go past waterfalls and just different barriers like the guppy and there's different points of the stream where there's higher threats of predators and then these lower zones where the guppies just kind of coincide with these killifish and they mainly feed on the guppy fry. So I wanted to try to find one in the beginning, but I just couldn't find any. No one had any around here, and I stumbled across, they had three, and I went ahead and got all three of them. I have one in each of these, and then I have a tank set up for them when I take them out, because as you can see, they are getting really nipped up. This, where'd he go? Blue, this guy right here was the one that had developed two blacks that reflections bad two black stripes on his tail and now he doesn't really even have a tail but what had happened was the male the yellow male in this tank had gotten sick and I had replaced him with another yellow male that was slightly bigger I tried to keep him as close as I could, but he was just slightly bigger. And from what I understand, the gold and the yellow color variation in the wild is one of the more attractive traits to the female. So when I introduced him to this environment with this slightly bigger yellow male, his coloration started to really change and he got a little bit brighter and he developed those lines you still can see a little bit of a black line on that top fin right there but when I found the killifish and I put the killifish in here that started to go away so with the slightly larger male he got two stripes and then with the predator that started to go away and from what I understand guppies are it's the only other species that I know of that can actually carry traits on that Y chromosome they're set up similar similarly to humans in the fact that there's uh, an XX and an XY and that Y doesn't normally carry too much well they I don't really know what it does to tell you the truth they haven't found anything that's really genetically passed on on that Y chromosome that I know of but in the guppy world they can and so I was curious if that was a trait that was passed on the Y chromosome but had a like a limiting factor of testosterone so as his testosterone level changes his color variation might change but I was just kind of curious to see what you guys thought if I was on the right track with that. <clears throat> I'm getting a really sore throat, so I'm trying to cut this really short. I wanted to show you the fry and all the different results I have gotten in the fry tanks, but the water's kind of cloudy. I don't have filters on them, and I need to put them in something different so you can actually see them. But let me go over here and you can see these guys. The stressed fry that I have was born to a female in this tank 
she had one fry during stressing and then had a tapeworm and then had, I think it was eight more fry drop. And when I put them in the little, it's like a little Petri dish to measure them, they were kind of timid at first and then progressively got more bold and was scoping out the place a little bit more. But definitely in the beginning, they were more leery and they kind of stayed in the same spot for just, it was literally like a second difference before they were moving, whereas the stress-free fry, as soon as I put them in the measuring beaker, they just never slowed down. I was trying to videotape it to see individually which ones would calm down fastest, and I was surprised that the stressed ones were shyer and then grew more bold, and then the stress-free fry were just I wouldn't say they were bold, they were just frantic and they they were trying to change directions before they were done changing the other direction. And with the stress-free fry, they got color, those little iridescent flakes. Within a week of being born, I have uh, two, a sand and a gravel, two stress-free broods over there and they I'm trying to look stress free. Yeah, two stress frees and a stress. And the stress free fry, they started developing color, those little iridescent flakes on their tails within a week before I keep them in the breeder box in these parental tanks for a week before I take them out and measure them and kind of look at their different personalities. I didn't want to try to catch them right when they were born because they were born at such crazy times and sometimes I was in class so I waited a full week from when I noticed the first one being born and I wanted to keep them in here to still stress them but since these guys do eat fry I wanted to keep them as separated as I can. These guys can jump. The one that I have in the other tank. I had him in a a little thing that I thought could keep him okay and when I came back he had jumped out so and I'm still since I hadn't I couldn't find these in the beginning I stopped looking into them and I started looking back into them now that I've I've had them in here for a couple weeks but since I've had to remove one of the females from this tank because she's just getting too eaten up and I kind of want to wrap things up and move on to my next project that I wanted to do. So, but I just wanted to give you a quick update. But thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a comment, hit the like, subscribe. Thanks for tuning in.